here we look at another way to get information about velocity and in turn get information about distance. So in this graph I'm given information about my velocity over 10 hours and I want to figure out how far I traveled during those 10 hours. So like what this graph is telling me is at two hours into my trip I was going four miles an hour. At 10 hours into my trip I was going 12 miles per hour. And so there's two kind of main different ways we can look at this. Uh, we're going to look at them both in this problem. And one is just by counting squares. And so we'll see what these squares mean in a second, but let's just count how many squares are underneath this curve. So if I go through full squares, I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 full squares. All right, so 15 full. And then I have these little pieces here. Now I got a little bit lucky. Each of these pieces looks like they're about a half square. So I can count those up. One, two, three, four, five half squares. Um, squares don't have to be halves though. Uh, maybe it would be a smaller fraction. And in that case you have to count it like that. Um, but the big thing we want to do is get an estimate as to the total number of squares underneath. So 17.5 squares. Now, does this mean I traveled 17.5 miles? It does not in this case. And so why is that? So each one of these squares represents a total distance traveled. Now let's think about what one of these squares is, like this square in particular. So this square, if I was traveling at two miles per hour, that's what the height of this square is. For two hours, that's what the length of this square is. How far would I have traveled? And the answer there is just 2 times 2. I'm traveling 2 miles an hour for 2 hours, 2 times 2, so that's 4 miles. So what I want to do is I want to multiply my 17.5 squares by 4 miles per square. And what I'll get out, uh, you can type that into your calculator if you want, and you'll get that you traveled 70 miles. Right? So counting squares works, you just have to make sure you count your number of squares and then count kind of how much total change you get for each square. So number of squares, total change for each square. Total change per square. Now the other way that you could have done this is by identifying the major shapes underneath. We get a little bit lucky because our shapes here, and let's say it's the same, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, our shapes are exact underneath the curve. Like there's no curvy things, nothing huge for us to worry about. And so I'm going to identify two major shapes here. So I'm going to identify this rectangle at the bottom here. I can find the area of that rectangle. I'm going to call this area 1. And then the other area I'm going to identify is this huge triangle. And this is going to, if I, if I can calculate these two areas, and add them up, I'll get the exact total area, right? So area one is a rectangle, so I can just do my length times my height. So my length here is 10 miles, and my height here is two miles per hour. Or, sorry, my length was not 10 miles, it was 10 hours. and so what I get here is the area A1 represents a total distance traveled of 20 miles. Similarly, you could do A2. Now, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So 1 half times my base times my height. My base for A2 is, again, 10 hours. But my height for A2 is much bigger. It's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So it's 10 miles per hour, and that'll give me a total distance traveled for this area A2 of 1 half times 100 of 50 miles. So I end up getting the same answer as last time. A1 plus A2 is a total distance of 70 miles, but this way is much more reliable because you're always using exact areas. So again, big idea from this section is if you have a curve of velocity, if you have a curve that represents your velocity, the way you can get the distance traveled is just by finding the area underneath that curve.